As far as the level of difficulty is concerned for the FE electrical and computer exam, and I'll address that first and then the P power. I think that the major challenge with the FE electrical and computer exam, and this is pretty obvious, um, it's my opinion, but it's pretty obvious. When you go through the specification, essentially the specification uh, presents the obvious challenge in the form of wide range of topics. So at the back of your mind, if you remember that I am essentially reviewing and uh, learning or relearning or consolidating my understanding of all the core electrical and computer topics that I learned in undergraduate engineering. That's what I'm going to be tested on. And the matter of fact is that electrical engineering is a very broad um, discipline. In fact, by some accounts and generally speaking, it's considered to be the most diverse form of engineering. Because if you think about it, I'm not gonna digress too much, but just to make a point very quickly, within electrical engineering, you technically have computer engineering, arguably electronics, you have telecommunication, you have power systems, controls is kind of offshoot of electrical, then you have biomedical, which uses a lot of electrical engineering, uh, some people even consider software essentially an extension of electrical engineering. Um, so when you look at this whole knowledge base that you can claim uh, as an electrical engineer, then the question becomes that how should they test you? Because electrical engineers can be wearing so many different hats, right? And that's one of the main reasons why the FE electrical and computer exam specification is so broad. So that is your primary challenge. That is the primary obstacle that you are encountering when you're preparing for the exam. Now, which means that it is very broad. Now, it is kind of sort of balanced by the fact that because it's so broad and when you look at the reference handbook as well, when you look at the NCES sample exam as well for electrical, you'll find that the level of depth that they go into in individual topics, in individual sections, right? And I'll use one very simple example of electromagnetics. So EMAG, if you're doing ECE, if you're doing EE, uh, electronics engineering, whatever you're doing uh, related to electrical engineering, um, it is almost guaranteed that you will come across electromagnetics. And those of you who have taken EMAG 1 or EMAG 2, you'll know that the kind of math that is involved in electromagnetics is extremely challenging. Vector calculus, integrals, differentiation, your different operators, del operator, curl operator. Now, when you prepare for EMAG in the context of FE electrical and computer exam, there are Gauss's, there's Gauss's law, there's Maxwell's equations and everything, but they have dedicated almost, give or take roughly half a page of real estate of reference material and fairly simply uh, for the FE electrical and computer exam preparation. So what does that mean? That basically means that yes, EMAG is a broad topic. Yes, there are a lot of top uh, concepts, but this is a fundamentals of engineering exam. So what they're sort of testing you are on the fundamentals, not on the fundamentals of just power systems, which is really the game um, that we are playing when it comes to the PE power exam, but fundamentals of entire electrical and computer engineering. But then the third element, the third dimension that comes into play with the FE electrical and computer exam, which kind of makes it a little bit difficult, right? The first one was the range of topics made it difficult, right? Then the depth of the topics, sticking with the fundamentals made it a little bit easy. Now the third variable that gets thrown into it is time constraint, which again makes it a little bit difficult because you practically have 2.9 minutes. Let's round it up to three minutes per question and the 110 questions on the exam, which means that you are expected to start spinning the wheels um, in your mind as soon as you see a question. You really have to be that fluent and prof proficient in your analysis and your calculation that you should not be having any second thoughts. You look at a question dealing with, let's say vector addition, you see a question dealing with KCL, you see a question dealing with transformer turns ratio, you see a question uh, dealing with three phase system, you see a question dealing with bubble sort, uh, insertion sort. Just by looking at the question, you should be like locked and loaded. I know exactly what I need to do and I'll basically take care of it. You can refer to all of your textbooks, right? But that will most likely be a little bit inefficient. Uh, you can use tons of free resources, um, YouTube, Google, now chat GPT, but then again, how do you know how far you have to go 
or you know is there any support structure sometimes you will have to second guess in terms of whether this is even credible whether the response is uh whether from you know what somebody is saying on youtube or what what chat gpt is responding to um or you can invest in an effective exam prep resources like the one that i offer at studyforfe.com i personally onboard every single student one on one understand your scenario whether you're in a first attempt situation whether you're in a repeat situation whether you have been out of school for 5 years whether you have been out of school for 10 years 15 years whether you don't have an electrical engineering background right i develop a game plan that is uh, conducive to your particular scenario and uh, once you are in the program you're going to see a one stop shop with all the resources explanations practice problems high quality practice problems support structure any question any technical issue that you have you can make use of my community two teaching assistants and myself and we'll take care of um, any type of clarifications that you have and uh, computer simulated practice exams in the whole line yard okay so that's a value proposition of my program at studyforfe.com for both fe electrical as well as a pe power exam preparation now let us briefly talk about the pe power exam on average i would say that the pe power exam that's and again that's my assessment in my opinion the pe power exam is more difficult than the fe electrical and computer exam in my opinion the pe power exam requires a different approach than fe electrical and computer exam preparation and the simple reason is that it is the final filter that they apply before essentially giving you the license obviously you have to make uh sure that you meet all the other documentation requirements reference checks background check and uh the whole nine yards the experience requirements and what not but by and large on a pound uh to pound comparison question by question comparison pick up the nc sample exam for fe electrical pick up the nc sample exam for pe power and you're going to see that the first two questions that you read uh even if you have not been preparing for any of these exams the fact that you have done engineering you have a good decent baseline understanding of the terms and the concepts and the knowledge areas right just read through the first five questions or the first three questions and without having any preparation i can get into you or at least that was my experience that's experience of most of my students when you look at the first five questions in the fe electrical and computer uh sample exam and see a sample exam you have an idea of what they're asking and you may even be able to solve some of those questions if the formula is provided to you from the reference handbook and um if not then at least you know the underlying concepts at least at a very fundamental level the good thing about the pe power exam is that it is focused right the pe power exam really tests you on power systems and nothing else and in fact with the new update that they ha have made from october 1st 2025 onwards by taking away engineering economics by taking away reliability um the focus is a lot more on power systems okay and the addition of some of the topics such as ultra capacitors and renewable pv systems and the wind systems um wind energy uh it just you know puts a higher intensity laser beam on power systems and really removes anything that was auxiliary or tangential so the approach to the pe power exam preparation has to be very curated has to be uh very focused and comprehensive and remember one thing as i have previously mentioned as far as fe electrical and computer exam preparation is concerned the third variable that comes into play is your time constraint right 3 minutes per question the interesting thing about the pe power is that the time constraint is not really an issue because you have 8 hours 8 hours for 80 questions all right compare this to 5 hours and 20 minutes for 110 questions in fe electrical so in the fe electrical they are really bringing in that time factor in order to sort of add another layer of complexity add another layer of challenge but in pe power if you look at those three variables the breadth of the topics it's actually pretty concentrated narrow on power systems it's a different story that power system itself is a pretty broad discipline but everything sort of depends uh, builds on top of each other right so if when you're learning three phase system square root 3 30 degrees um it actually carries through your induction motors it carries through your synchronous motors it carries through your synchronous generator carries through your transformers and your dlms transmission um transmission line models power system stability protection the whole line yards right so essentially whatever you're learning is not going to waste you're learning uh flip flops and counters in fe electrical no implications whatsoever for circuit analysis you're learning kcl and kvl in circuit analysis no implications whatsoever in um 
uh, software engineering. You're learning something in software engineering, no implications to engineering economics, right? So pretty narrow. So the first degree of freedom essentially that they have with respect to making the topics very broad and making FE challenging because of that reason is neutralized because P power, focus, narrow, okay? The second element where FE was testing you on fundamentals, fundamentals of engineering, PE exam really goes deep. And this is the big challenge, right? Just by the level of depth and open-endedness and um, the difficulty on a question by question basis, that basically outpaces or outclasses ineffectively, uh, you know, makes the time factor insignificant. And if you're preparing for these exams, I would recommend you to check out my website, studyforfe.com, um, and feel free to reach out to me in case of any questions. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. On a weekly basis, I'm creating content for FE Electrical and P Power Exam Preparation. I also discuss topics related to electrical engineering with a focus on power systems engineering. If you'd like to learn more about my FE Electrical and P Power Exam Preparation programs, please visit my website, studyforfe.com.